So I know um, y'all being highly critical, uh, Charleston White. Um, what was your relationship with Charleston? Like, how, how did you meet him? Because Charleston is highly critical that he feel like gang members and rappers are the downfall of black communities. Charleston White is the number one enemy to black America, to black youth. He's more damaged than any Ku Klux Klan. Mm, well, how so? Y'all got problems in Dallas. I looked at the statistics from 1973 to 2016. It was over 1,400 unsolved murders on blacks at the hands of whites. Hmm. The only plug that came in Texas back was gangs. It's not a registered gang, a black gang in Texas before 1983. But they got the, the Proud Boys, they got the, uh, the Klansmen, they got M13, they got TS, Texas Syndicate. All of those are formulated gangs in Texas that been pushing up on blacks. They've been, they've been doing their silent community and this and that. But until crack cocaine came and first M13, they MS13 come from California. Okay. And when they was dealing um, with, with Rick Ross, they start coming out here and the Hoovers came out here and start, you ain't got to go to a Mexican. They start putting dope in blacks hands. Now, it was a good thing, but it gave them an independence. And them dudes start becoming Crips. Mm -hmm. So you got Charlie. Charlie, I don't, I don't know him from a can of paint. But this man hurts his own self. In his own testimony, he said he was trying to shoot something and he hit himself in the eye. And then he went to the circus and was running from a clown or to a clown or being a clown, and he messed his eye up again. So the man is handicapped. He started off with one eye. <laughs> then he catch a murder, and he gives all this glorification. He said if anybody said that he a rat, he'd give him $25,000. He told on his crime partner. And the man was... 15 when the murder started and 16 when he got convicted and his earliest parole date is 2066. Now in a child's mind, the development of a mind, we're talking about white people. They say a, a, a white man's mind from 14, he doesn't develop until he's 20 and doesn't process until he's 26. So you push a, a, if it had been a white kid killing a, a black man, you think he'd have got a 2066 day? Not at all. So we have a problem here. So we got this little boy that went to a detention center and they was pressuring him and he went to PC and a white lady gave him a book called Monster Cody, Monster. And he became a crip behind a book. And he started idolizing and he told the kids something they didn't know because they hadn't been to country ass Texas. Not that like that, though, you know. Yeah, I got you. Uh, so he became the big man at three foot four. And he carried on that platform, introduced himself to Melvin Farmer, came out, got with everybody, and he saw his angle. I ain't mad at his angle. But he's a detriment because it's a lot of these closet queers that's been wanting to say, fuck gang members, fuck, but you ain't done nothing no better. Mm. So General Patton said it is better to make a wrong decision than no decision at all. So you got all these coons around here making no decision, standing on Charleston White's back. But what has he done? He talked about, all, I haven't seen one giveaway. I haven't seen nothing that he related to doing with kids since my little short term with him. I go back doing to my community from the 70s. Garth Brooks gave us a million dollars on restructuring L.A. after the gang, after the gang truce in 1992. I started the first black count, youth council in the city of Compton in the 70s. My council members were Omar Bradley was a mayor, 
Uh, Paul Richardson was a mayor. Uh, Lawrence Adams was a city manager. Uh, uh, John Johnson was a city manager. I've created, I, I, mean, I didn't create, but I gave some kids some opportunity to, to see how real gangsters live, how money was spent. Yeah. Not just street stuff. Now, I know he and uh, Say Cheese just did a huge giveaway, um, back to school giveaway, about two, three weeks ago. I mean, it was thousands of people out there. Like, um, I don't know if you saw the pictures of the videos. Mm -mm. But, I mean, free Nike shoes, free haircuts, mm -hmm. backpacks, things. I mean, people were out there from that morning, lines, thousands of people came through. That's a beautiful floor mat. But that's all free shit. Yeah. They get that shit donated from Walmart, from Nike. You know what I'm saying? Because that's their write-offs. And, and it's good. But how many tennis, with the tennis shoes, did they give kids socks? Did they, the most critical thing a kid needs is underwear and socks, huh? That's definitely important for sure. You know, so a backpack, shit, what am I going to do with it? That's I mean. Just, I mean, you know, it's just like a book today. Yeah. If he, Most of these kids are roll weed with a book. He, he, he ain't doing everything on their on they laptops, huh? Yeah. So uh, 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 a book is primitive. Oh, I gave books out. I passed out. How many kids going to read them? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm saying they got book bags, not books. But you know, book bags. I, mean, yeah. I, never, I heard what you said. Yeah. But where did you, that wasn't an original idea. We've been doing that in California for 20 years. Gotcha. But it ain't changed the situation of people being homeless, huh? What, what do you feel like his, his biggest, I, I know you're saying he had detriment. So what about his message? What is it about? Because I know I interviewed Charleston before. And I his said, message is full of shit. <laughs> his message, I don't give a fuck. That man said one day he didn't believe in Moses. Show sure where Moses' grave is. He just will say anything, man. He has no substance to the stuff he said. It kind of sounds like it makes sense to you. Mm. But tell me one time, when we came here first, we came here to talk about some stuff that he said about Compton. But Charleston is not a debater. He's an argue. He's all. He wants to dominate the conversation. He will not sit down literally and talk to nobody. Hmm. Whoever he ever interviewed, and they had a challenge on debating him, something he said. Uh, I, I can see that. It's, I, I, I can see it a little bit. I mean, have Absolutely. you I, have he ever sit down with somebody that had an opposite opinion of him? I would say I've never seen it set up knowingly. I mean, and I don't see all the Charleston interviews, so I can't speak of it, but completely. I don't know if an interview knowingly that somebody that he walked in knowing that they're about to oppose him. Yeah, no, but he hasn't. He Everybody that he interviews with is like you interviewing him, and he going to say some way out, and nobody can counter it. But we also here for the show. We want him to say the outlandish yeah, and, right? And that's, and that's good for the show. But is it good for the people? Mm.